How do you go from humble acting beginnings to being a star in a sitcom and then and breaking that mold and continuing a successful career? Joe and I have set out to find the answers with an amazing guest. This is Call Time. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Call Time. We are joined today by an amazing guest. Uh, it's just an honor to have French Stewart, the yes. modern king of sitcom, with us. Oh, wow. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm, I'm well. I'm better now. Yeah. <laughs> this is great because y'all went to school together. We did. We right? did. We did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's, uh, that's all you're getting about that. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. Is there more? <laughs> A lot of things happened. Oh, yeah. A lot of things happened. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Is that no, I just want to see Joe like get a little <laughs> bit nervous right now. Oh yeah, yeah. That's no, all. That's we, all. I we, bet you are. We had like a, a kind of like a, a wonderful youth. It was the last. We swallowed it up. We're the we're the last of the baby boomers. Oh, so yeah, we right. swallowed up all the fun, mm. <laughs> and so we got the last of the '80s fun, and that was that was uh, me and Joe, and just you know. Well, we had a great group of uh, of, of supporting actor. I mean, it's yeah. people who supported us and what we do. And, and yeah. How we, yeah, yeah, we, we cared we, about was, what we were doing, and you and know, we were still excited to, <laughs> to be young and not right. you know gristled and yeah. angry and uh, yeah. beset with yeah. bills and yeah, troubles. Yeah, damn it, become gristled, <laughs> oh, disillusioned God. with the world. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but but you were a year under you. That's right. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. So, right behind me. That's right. But there was not, we, we, there was yeah. not uh, being that close. I mean, we. Right. Well, but I'll tell you, like, at that time, they were like a, a, you know, like we, a year behind felt bigger, you know, mm. because it just, it, it felt like that somebody had already gone through a bunch of stuff that you were about to go through. And then you'd see, like, I remember going to see uh, Joe uh, in, uh, like, you know, they were doing an exam play. Mm -hmm. And I was very serious about everything. And it was, uh, you know, I went to see Joe and Joe did Equus. And that split my brain open in a way that was like, oh, I got to be at least good as Joe. Uh, right. How am I ever going to be as good as Joe? You know, and your mind was sort of like geared that way, you know. But years later, it sort of like kept that way because I saw you do like, uh, you know, the Puppet Master show oh. where it's just you and a puppet. And it's like, oh, Joe, Joe. You know, mm -hmm. and so you inspire each other, but it's sort of through a, a an act of jealousy in a way. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I have the same thing with our producer Fabrizio. I would watch him act, and I go, I, "I've got to do whatever." I've he's got to doing. be able right. to do that. I've got to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we had another friend, Mary Lodholm, and I was always like, "How can I ever be as good as Mary?" There's no way. Um, There's no way. You know, but you know, uh, it's like life is long, and people hit these moments where they're good at a certain point, and then they come back, and they go away, and they come back, but. But man, it was a, it was a, we had a really good group and it was a really nice time to just be like a, a young person in Los Angeles, just running loose right. and yeah. trying to make art. Yeah. Right. And, and you guys get that. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Um, yeah. It's the same. Let's, yeah. Let's go back into the French history though. Where did French come from? What's, what's, where does the name French I am come from? Milton French Stewart the fourth. Oh, oh nice. nice. I didn't know that. Yeah, each one a bigger jackass than the next. <laughs> <laughs> the first Milton French Stewart uh, killed a guy on a bridge in Virginia and then ran off into the woods. The second one was a boxer that was inappropriate with children. Oh, my. And then the third one, my dad was like a professional con man. <laughs> It took four generations to get the fucking actor. Actor! <laughs> but, you know, I don't know why they kept this grand scheme going on. Oh, we must, we must be bequeath another Milton, you know? It was like when my wife, uh, you know, got pregnant, which was hard because I had one sperm left. Dog paddled his way to victory, you know? And, you know, my wife's plumbing was like a Japanese obstacle course. We had, we had, you know, we had a lot up against it. So when it finally happened, I was like, oh, please don't let it be a boy so I don't have to make this decision. <laughs> like, please don't let it, but like, please let there not be a Milton French Stewart V, you know? And so when I saw a girl, it was just like, oh, I'm free. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, the high shot where all the birds are flying yeah. away and a kid flying. A like, I just, I, it was just a relief because I didn't want to have to deal with it. It's like, you got a decision to make. You're free until yeah. she's 16. 
Yeah. Yeah. How about mm, that? Then <laughs> momentarily free. <laughs> okay. You got to worry. But you're from Albuquerque, New Mexico, right? I am. And, and so you, you say your father was a con man. What 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 did he do? Like he, what? Well, like did he, he have a, a job and then con on the side or what? what? Yeah, he kind of like he like he, one of his things. Like eventually, he moved into marrying wealthy women because <laughs> he was kind of a handsome man. He looked like uh, you know like a Tom Selleck guy with like a mustache mm-hmm. and a whole thing, like a cowboy hat, and he was charming. But um, what he would do is like they got divorced when I was young. And so he would pick you up on a, on a, a, a Sunday and he would say, all right, look, I'm gonna, we're going to have some fun. I'm going to take you to see a movie, but first we got to do something. And you'd be like, OK. And so one time he takes his car and he parks it right next to a car rental place. And then he rents the same model of car and he pulls it over and he changes the tires out. And I said, well, why'd you do that? And he said, well, you know, it's just so much cheaper to uh, rent a car for the day than to buy all new tires. And they only check the paint. So you really have to, like, you have to think about these things, French. In your feet. Like, he was like, he thought he was, like, teaching me things. Yeah. Right. Training, training so, you the way. So I've got to ask. <laughs> yeah. The way. Have you ever used that tool before? No. I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm like, I, I, I had the opposite thing where it's like trying to talk. Like, my dad was also a uh, likes to fight guy. And so, like, a lot of my youth was just spent, like, trying to talk him out of doing things. Like, oh, come on, Dad. Like, we're, like, we're having a nice day. Like, let's just, like, oh, no, it's not, you know, it just respected me. It's like, no, no, you know, let's just, like, yeah, but, like, we only have, like, one day a week. Like, yeah. you know, so it's, like, a lot of, like, parenting your parent. Mm. So, you know. Maybe we don't have to wrestle in the street this week. Yeah. Dad, yeah. Like, Dad we're at the Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. How about that? You know, he's like, we're going to go see a movie. And then he, like. You know, I'm, I'm in the, like, third grade, and he takes me to see The Exorcist. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, Jesus, okay. Yeah. And then it always ends the same way with him going, like, uh, don't tell your mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Mm. <laughs> all right, well, then I guess this question's going to come out of nowhere after all that. What? Why acting? <laughs> oh. Out of that rich background, why, why acting, French? You know, I, like, I... Strangely enough, uh, uh, like I hit this point from high school into college, I got like a scholarship to go to West Texas State University. And it was just like what I could get. And it was like a speech scholarship because I'd done speech. And so I go there, but I was still sort of, uh, I was half in, like there was certain times where I could be gregarious, but there were other times where I was a little bit more shy and I was just not confident. And so I started doing plays and I thought, oh, this is great because I know what I'm going to say. I know where I'm going to walk. People have to listen to me. <laughs> and it's like a controlled expression. Right. Yeah. And then that, that was it. And then, like, gradually I started to, it started to inform me as a normal person in life. Mm, right, right. If that makes sense. I, I do exactly what did, that means. Did you yeah. like silent films then, too? Or is that kind of something that came that later? That kind of came and, later. I just sort yeah. of, like, started watching them here and there. And, uh, you know, you'd see Harold Lloyd or, like, I think I saw uh, City Lights, you know, with Charlie Chaplin. Mm. And I just thought, oh, it's so elegant and it's so quiet. I don't have a bunch of people quacking at me and I can, like, follow the story. And I, I don't know. I just sort of... Uh, uh, it felt like a more active way of going to a museum where it was sort of quiet, but I could still uh, watch somebody making something magical that, uh, I don't know. Well, Right. Well, how, how much have, have, have silent movies informed, because you're a big comedy actor and a sitcom actor. Yeah. So is that, is that a, a, a very yeah, informative? Yeah, it informs your... my sitcom work. It's just because yeah. like a lot of that, and I, I did a lot of like children's movies, you mm-hmm. know. So, and they used to like let you do your own stunts and I was all like, I can do it, you know? And that, now my body, like I wake up and it sounds like I'm making popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like pop, 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 pop. You know, but I think it informed a lot of it. And, you know, I never felt like I was that, but I felt like I wanted to express something along that line, right. you know? Right, so how did you make the leap then from going from the West, West Texas University right. to L.A. in the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I had, like, my dad was living down in Corona. Like, okay. he had married a woman who had an orange ranch. <laughs> and she was growing oranges for Sunkist. And he, he was down there, and they had, like, all this room. And uh, I'd been doing pretty well doing plays in West Texas. And so, basically, at one point, I came in, and this English teacher told me, he said, I saw your play, and you were really good. 
like, I don't think you need to be here. I think you need to go someplace else and just do this. And I was all like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so then I told my mom and the fact that like a teacher had told me made mm. it seem official, I guess. Well, oh, right. <laughs> right and so she was like, oh, well, you know, you should go out and like maybe stay with your dad. And I told my dad and then that's how I got hooked up with the American Academy. And I, I came out for a summer school and I did an audition and I did uh, Children of the Lesser God with like full on, <laughs> oh. like I did like, I, I like I studied like sign language to get it perfect mm. and i walked in there and i was ready and i go in there and i start doing it and i'm i'm on fire and then i look over and the guy who was looking at me it used to be a guy bren morgan bren, bren. Mm. you remember bren? You remember bren yeah he's a sweet guy i remember he watched me and then he immediately just started writing and I couldn't like, and then suddenly I was just like my, my sign language just, I was like, well, he's like not watching this. So I might as well just do this. And I'm just like, I'm saying the lines with him. And then he looks back up and I'm like, oh, I'm trying to get back in again. And then, and then I left that day and we drove all the way back to Corona. And I was like, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Mm. There's no way they're going to let me into this prestigious school. It's never going to happen. What, what's my next move? What, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I walked home. The phone rang. And they were like, we'd like to invite you. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, what? I'm Al Pacino. I'm the king. <laughs> all you people are garbage. You'll see. You'll, You'll all see. Right. You know? I'll show you all. Right. Yeah, but that was basically what it was. It was yeah. just, I remember driving out like in a, my, that Toyota truck. I yeah, had yeah, yeah, yeah. Forever. For and I drove. We all that. had a Toyota. Truck. We all had a Toyota. Yeah. Another. I drove out with like two hundred and fifty dollars, which was a fortune. I got a job at Vaughn's. I'm like, wow, <laughs> perfect, you know. And you could. It was when you could still have like a shitty job, and then uh, and get, go to school and go to school and just live with like a, a ton of people. Mm. Right. Yeah, we did that. We, we did that. that. <laughs> we, were, we never we lived, lived together. We were, no, we, no, we, we, that's, we were never which is roommates. astonishing. We were, we're never roommates. Oh, but, we would have been great yeah. roommates. Ah. Oh, that would have been just too much in one room. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get to the academy. What What is your biggest challenge as an actor that you have to overcome? Stage fright. Really? I had epic stage fright, and I got to the end of my second year, and uh, Georgia Phillips pulled me in, and she said, you're not an actor. Like, you're just like, I can see you shaking. It matters too much. You're not an actor, and you should probably, like, you know, not do this anymore. She, she told me the same thing. Did she tell me, <laughs> she told me the same thing? Well, well, maybe she's she... pretty drunk, too. Because <laughs> I like you. Yeah, the other part of my job was to go get vodka she's... for her over oh, at the, at the, oh, at the Ralph's. Oh, I think she's still alive. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. I guess technically. Uh, hey, there's oh, no filter no. on this show. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I you own can it. do what you want with that. But <laughs> <laughs> it did happen. Well, yeah. No, but it was, uh, you know, it was like one of those like, like heart crushing things. And then, um, and then after that, I just sort of like, I spent the rest of the year feeling like, well, I don't give a crap. I'll just figure mm. out what to do. And then I do a play and then suddenly like I, I had quit on life. And so I wasn't nervous. And so I was like, oh, well, then I'll just keep doing this. <laughs> you know, and then I just wasn't nervous anymore. Well, because I remember I, I, I would see you in shows. And at the beginning, once you get out there, you were visibly, it was visibly, visibly, visibly shaking. Like, like physically, there was a whole, you, you, yeah, I was you, afraid. You, you were going. And there was a, that, that split second where it looked like it was either fight or flight. You were either going to stay or you're going to go. It was. But you click in. And you couldn't watch anything else on the stage, French. You were just because you you just you just fell into it. And I, it was, it, it, I appreciate that. It, it just <laughs> took me to like the second act to get there. Yeah, it's it, like, it not it not felt, true. Not true. It was just a, it felt like an, an eternity. You know, I just like I was just flipped out. But it it uh, but it was good for me. You know, because it's like you kind of once you get it behind you, you're like, oh, okay. Like I actually I didn't leave. I didn't stop. <laughs> I didn't, like you know, I'm I'm not an accountant now. I I'm I not bleeding today. I'm not bleeding, and it happened. And like I actually, my brain just feels a little bit different. I don't know how. There's, there's, there's something else. Something's there. not yeah, quite. Something, yeah. something shifted. You know. Yeah, well, yeah. Such a great group of actors you worked with at the Academy. Brennan Bear. Yeah, Brennan. Uh, 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 Keith Wilbur, Keith, Keith Wilbur, Wilbur who, yeah. who who I've spoken to about yeah. coming and playing with us a little bit. Oh yeah, um, um, yeah, yeah, such a, a great. There, we had a great group, you know, and and it was all overlapping, you know. I mean, uh, what did you take from those guys from that from that group of core 
core guys that you you know that I we think, hung with? I think there was a, a a combination with that group of uh, both sort of uh, I, be, like a competitive thing, but also. Uh, Oh, you did it. Like when you did it, like everybody was like, right. oh, wow, yeah, you know, you did it. And so that was sort of, uh, that was like delightful, you know, and Brennan it was just, uh, you know, he's passed and. Uh, Miss Brennan. Miss, 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 yeah, Mr. I Brennan. do too. I do too. He was my roommate for so long and just, uh, but he was really elegant. And I remember he was like six feet six. Huge. He's huge. huge. He's very tall, but very willowy. And we would get into dance class and they would say, oh. You know, you should just go to Vegas right now and you, you'll you get rich. Like Dana Landers would tell him, just go to Vegas right now. Just quit school and go to Vegas. You'll be rich. And he was all like, what? No, I'm Albert Finney. I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to be the, I'm the, you know, and they were like, no. And then like years later, he was like, oh, I should have gone to Vegas. <laughs> you know, I mean, who knows? But like, I, I don't know. It was, uh, it was also the, the time, you know, where, uh, you know, like, like your class ahead of us was so good, like with John and you, John, John Stafford, John Stafford, John like, Stafford. you know, all these people that were just really good at the same time. And then behind us was sort of like Paul Rudd and well, like, cause we worked so hard. We worked yeah, hard. Everybody we, worked. We, everybody it cared about time. it. Yeah. And you guys were doing scenes in, in, in film class. These guys were right. doing scenes like from, from the deer hunter. You know, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> they're, they're, they're like slapping each other. Mow! Yeah, mow! that's one of the things, like, yeah, that's one of the things I love about the academy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of the time, not the slapping, but no, <laughs> not so much. The that's not so much. It kind of hurts sometimes. We're like, no, it's got, we got a feeling. <laughs> well, but I, I, but I, it's that person. you you find that group of people that that really love doing it, and that's what helps you grow. Is that there's people you find that love the craft and love exploring. And, and that's that's kind of that's where exactly from. what it is. It's unabashed commitment to something, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, seeing somebody. I remember there would be times where you see somebody like sort of, and you think like, I'm not sure if they're gonna like if they're an actor at the time. You're like, you know, like I don't know, I don't know. And you see them flop, 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 and then suddenly you see them do something, and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, there they are, there they <laughs> yeah. are, and then suddenly they change. Like, not just as an actor, but they change as a person. Right. And you think, well, you can, even if it doesn't work out for you, you can use that in anything. Like, you just changed yourself. It's mm -hmm. a magic trick. Right. Yeah. So that it, it translates to so many other, other you don't things. You have to be an actor, per You'd se. You could be a salesman. You could be, like, you know, an, it, 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 a, parenting. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of it. Absolutely. Yeah, it teaches you about life. Mm -hmm. it teaches yeah. you how to live uh, life. I, uh, I, at least I felt that when I when, when I finished with it. that's what that that's what it taught me. Yeah. Well, this show isn't about you. Well, we're talking here. We're talking. <laughs> How is here. that possible? Oh, jeez, <laughs> oh, yeah. French. What did you take away from the academy, buddy? What, what do you like? What is it you take away and still carry with you? Yeah. Like, what, what, that you what, still use? Yeah. Oh, I think um, I remember like one time uh, Michael Keenan. Michael he, Keenan. Yeah, yeah, he told me French. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. But he was like, uh, I was like working too hard to get to something. And he said, no, you already have it. You're what you're doing is that. And I said, well, I'm just sort of like mimicking my uncle. He's like, that's it. And I said, well, but I've already been taught like this huge skill set. And I want to go through all my beats and all my stuff. And he's like, no, those like, look, it, you know, if you're working on a car and you can unscrew something with your fingers, you don't need a screwdriver. You just did it with your fingers. Leave your screwdriver alone. <laughs> and it was like, that's it. Like, yeah. like, leave it alone when you leave it alone. I find that's true with like painters too, where you see somebody and they finished a painting and you're all like, oh, that's perfect. And then they go, yeah, but maybe just one yeah. more. And you're like, oh, you fucked it up. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, it's a lifelong thing. Mm -hmm.